to conscientize the people of Bayasa. We are going to revive the morale of our people so that everybody is his neighbor's, uh, everybody must be his, his neighbor's keeper. What did I say? A brother's keeper. You cannot sit down and somebody is being uh, molested and you keep quiet about it. It is because there is no leadership that is inspiring the people. We are going to inspire that kind of leadership where we shall be our brother's keeper in Bayesa. And then, as a government, we will ensure that we have eyes everywhere. Most criminals know that it is difficult for them to get away. Crime will begin to reduce. But we will do our part as leaders, as those who are, in, are custodians of the resources of the people. We are just custodians. Why should I be celebrated for building a road? What is my responsibility? What is the job description of a governor? The governor's position has certain duties. You must pay salaries. You, why should I even be involved in the payment of salaries? The Ministry of Finance if does not pay, the commissioner does not ensure that salaries are paid as at when due. They has no business being commissioner for finance. Because we are not going to carry block in any sites to bring the money. The derivation we get, the allocation we get is already enough money to take care of issues concerning salaries, areas, and those, you know, recurrent issues that affect the morale of workers and the morale of parents that will be hearing that school fees have not been paid so students are not writing exams. Why? Because the economy is so bad that the parents cannot even survive. We will revive the economy of our state, Bayesa State. And that is why we are using this medium to introduce to Bayesas. We have heard all kinds of things. They keep saying, you hear rumors every day. Uden Zeradini is being a, is a placeholder for for uh, social person. I'm a placeholder, I'm in the balance with you. We are equals. They are still saying that, oh, no, no, it's uh, uh, this person that bought form for Uden. Please, since your, your, your principal bought my form, he's just telling you that I'm better. And so, since he bought the form, all of you go and vote for me. So if PDP feel that they bought my form, I beg all PDP in a common sense, we're going to vote for the person who I don't buy form for. I don't know why people will be listening to all these kind of things. I'm 47 years. It is my generation, and even the ones younger that should be in leadership. Once you are 60, you are supposed to be retired. You have no business in government. Science has proven that the older you get, the less productive you are to society. So it is for the young people now to decide. It is you, it's not me who takes an enemy. I'm only burning this cat. It is for you young people to decide whether we will continue in this manner. There are no jobs. 13, 14 years old girls have moved into prostitution in Yenegua. Ritualism. Is it correct? Ritualism. Yes. <laughs> Ritualist. That's what's happening in our state today. When they say Yahoo, there's something like Yahoo. Like a ritual. Juju. Nonsense. They want to embellish it and create Yahoo. It's not Yahoo. They are turning our young people to ritualists. Because there is no hope in the society. It is left for you, young people. You are graduating, there are no jobs. I am not unemployed. I will continue to build my capacity and develop myself to the point where I will be useful to society outside here. But if all of us leave, if all of us go and face our businesses and our families, who is going to bear this cart? Who is going to ensure that our economy is revived to the point where it creates jobs for young people? We are not even up to 600,000 people. And yet, look at what's happening on the streets. They should be deceiving themselves. Flood is coming. I've been talking about the flood and our environment. Look at the, the, the environmental abuses that is going on. What role are we playing as leaders to ensure that our environment is conducive for us to live as a people? It's not enough to complain. What actions are we taking? Look, the way the world operates is that you must take action. 
Then the funds that have been that, that have been made available by United Nations, European Union, and the rest, you can benefit from it. But if you don't take action, they are watching. They are watching the kind of leadership in your state, and that's why they don't release money. The last flood, over five thousand families were relocated by UNICEF in Kaduna because they saw what the government was doing. The government educated their people. They employed flood marshals. They, they, they ensured that the, the weak was relocated. They informed their people. They were shouting. They prepared higher grounds and shelters for the weak. So when the Europeans look and see what you are doing, they support you with all the funds that you require. But if you like, die. If leaders who have the responsibility to take action do not do anything, nobody will come to your rescue. And therefore, we want to take leadership that will be responsible and responsive to the issues that affect our people. And so, we will be talking about the flood, we will take action, we will employ flood marshals, we will by now begin to build around the three senatorial districts, we would have dredged and prepared higher grounds that will accommodate the mass of people that will be relocating when the flood comes. Look, we are just talking about the few in Yeregua. What of those in Southern Ejo, in Ekeremo, in Sabama, in, in uh, Biseni, Biseni, Zarama, Okotia, parts of Obia? Nobody talks about them. Nobody cares. I was in Biseni recently. The people were organizing a launch for 100 million to deal with flood. I went to attend it. I attend so sad. Because when I was commissioner for environment, I, I was in the flood with them. I know that if you clear behind the community and dredge the excess sand on the river, you would have blocked the water that floods the town. The same thing in my community, the same thing in most communities in Bayasa, the water comes from behind the community. So a government can decide to block it. In fact, the entire new heaven is being flooded by the small creek by the wood. Because some community people sold all the sand that they would drag where they had their warehouse. So they went and dug all the sand and sold it. So when the water comes in, it just flows straight into New Heaven and the cemetery. And you see even the dead bodies are scampering for safety. So you see corpses floating up all over the town. In the next one and a half months, there will be cops floating in Yeregua. There is no visible action being taken by government. When I was commissioner for environment, I prepared a budget and handed over to the leadership, the new leadership, current leadership, relocating that cemetery because the cemetery is in the wrong place. That budget I handed over to them. In that budget, we had a water master equipment attached to it so that by now, we would have been clearing all the block drainages in the town. So that when the water comes, it will flow. If you don't clear the drainages and the water rises, it will block the drains and then the flooding will begin. Our people are, a lot of our people are indisciplined. Our waste management practice is nothing to write up about. But as we speak, there is no sanitation authority chairman that will coordinate the cleanup of the town. So there is a huge vacuum in leadership and we intend to fill that vacuum for the good of our people. This flood will be coming. Bayasans need to prepare. We are going to provide our own support to deal with any problem that faces us. Today, everybody takes care of the security. You are the one in charge of the water. You are, you are the one in charge of power. You are the one that is now going to relocate yourself when a natural disaster like flood comes. What then is the role of leadership? That is why I have decided with the, with the Labour Party and my team to take leadership so that we can make Bayasa great again. We can reboot Bayasa, we can rebuild Bayasa and make us the pride of the Indian nation. Thank you. If the people say they don't want, I'm not desperate to be governor. I will go face my work. But young people must get up. It is you that is graduating and there is no job. 
If it's our mothers that have nothing to do anymore, businesses are leaving the state because it's no longer conducive for them to, to live in. This is the liberation that Bayasas have been waiting for. And so we are going to get to the communities, just as we have been doing since. We are going to be talking to the people and let them understand that this is the time to wake up. Let us take the destiny in our hands and change the fortunes of our state. Of the allocation that we take, we should deliberately send money to the microfinance bank so that that bank can manage the resources in supporting businesses in the state. I talked about producing sugar in Bayesa. To do that, women must begin to plant the species of sugar cane that will require to carry out that process. That process. All those things were managed by the government, and you know, government most times don't manage businesses for money. It, 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 it died, including the ones that people took vehicles and they and so on and so forth. That's in the past. What I'm looking at is how do we re re-energize transport system in Bayesa. In the last administration, there was a plan which I think I'm going to further the plan, to build the Bogele Terminal. The idea of the Bogele Terminal, not what they are brandishing today. They don't, they don't understand the issues. The idea of the Bogele Terminal was that there were too many vehicles in Yenequa. Therefore, we want to restrict external vehicles to Ibogele. When you, when you bring, when you travel from anywhere to Bayesa, stop at Ibogele so that we now have internal transport system. That's why the state invested money to build the, um, the simulation driving school, driving facilities in the Ministry of Transport. Go there, it's there. And then bought vehicles. I don't know whether those vehicles were bought by this government, but we, we, we started the arrangement to buy vehicles. Probably they now supply them, or all these people paid and they brought it. But grass is what is growing on the vehicles there. The plan was that we train by essence with the simulation equipment that we have bought. We buy vehicles and then young people from Bayasa are the ones who are flying within the town. That's where we know each other. But this issue of criminals coming in, what kinds of vehicles and all kinds of care, everybody is doing what he likes. We wanted to restrict it and try and manage it. So we built the terminal at Ibogene. The uncompleted one right now is uncompleted. If you don't understand the full package, then you wonder. The full package is that the terminal, the vehicles, and the training school. Unfortunately, it is disconnected. When we take leadership, the first thing we will do is to complete that project so that we can have those vehicles plying the state. If those vehicles were plying the state as, I, as planned, by now that the, the subsidy have been removed, we would have said, okay, all government vehicles should be doing 50%. That way, it becomes a means of cushioning the transportation scheme in the town. It is only somebody who does not understand how society runs that will keep Keke banned till this time. When there is a conflict, curfew is used as a stopgap measure to deal with crisis. Immediately after that time, things go back to normal. For you to measure the economy of any society, the nightlife must equilibrium the day activities. The nightlife in Bayesa is dead. It's dead. They don't even care about it. There are some people who their businesses start from, from 8 in the evening by 5 in the morning, they are sleeping. Genuine businesses go to societies that function. Some people have tailored themselves to only just feed people at night because people will be moving. Most you don't understand that. Why are you complaining about IGR? The opportunities for IGR to come into the state are deliberately being shut down by a leadership that don't understand the issues. And so all this ban on Keke and all that we will deal with, with things like that will not allow our state to be plumbed into a situation where we don't even know which people are operating. Look at the Keke, there are over 20,000 in this way, we will ensure that we organize a town hall meeting. We look at all those areas so that those that we can deal with and reduce 
those modes of transportation to certain areas and then organize the city so that it looks like a place where human beings are beat. The election, I went to um, Osborne Lake and I saw women in this steep boat. I went to the boat and introduced myself to them and I made a social contract with them. When I told them that I traveled with this boat 34 years ago with my grandmother, it would be an aberration that 34 years after we are still traveling like this. Nowhere in the world, 34 years after, people have not changed the mode of doing one thing. And I promise those women that when I take leadership, I'm going to change this mode of transport. And let me tell you my experience in NDDC. I was going to Calabar from Oron and I saw the dilapidated ferry terminals. I went to my boss and I told him, uh, don't also forget, when I was in NDDC, it was the first time NDDC would have two SA youths. One of the leaders participating in this election insisted that I should be sacked. The minister said no, he will not sack the dance. The, the, the argument went to the SGS office and they agreed that okay, share the office. So I was restricted to rivers, Aquaibon, Cross River, Abia, and Imo State. For those who don't know. That's why when I was there, SAU, I wasn't coming to Bayesa. In fact, when we came to hand over buses and uh, generator and hostel in NDU, which was one of the first assignments that I did when I was appointed. My colleagues from here even challenged me when my boss decided to say, let's go and demobilize me. And I said, ah, oh, sorry, sir, we, sorry, sir, we forgot. Me and MD forgot that this is your authority. I know what I faced in the hands of supported leaders. So as I was traveling, I saw it, and I went to my business. I posted the vehicles. And then they started caricaturing me. Went to Facebook. He's selling his cars. He's selling NDDC cars. Ask them, how many vehicles did they buy for the ministries? Ask them. I gave them a budget of 6 billion, 40 million naira. I handed it over to the government. So that people don't say I'm in Zeni, I'm not. I tried to support him to get our state moving, but he failed, and so I think that I can do better. I gave him the budget for the Ministry of Environment. I put vehicles, trucks, excavators, bulldozers, water master equipment to be cleaning the town. It's an amphibious equipment to be cleaning the town. If only you to navigate, you can change the equipment to dredger, swamp booty, what are essential removers? These are our problems. What are essential removers? Even a pilot, you can change, you just buy the accessories. Then it also has a propeller, so it propels itself. It can come down on land and walk to on that place. So you don't need to be hiring swamp boogie, low bed, uh, top boot. The equipment was sold in Finland, I put it in that budget. I relocated the cemetery in that budget. I started waste to wealth. So all our waste. We buy compressors and compress them, separate them, and we'll be exporting the waste.